Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today's Friday, it's December 23rd. I hope you're doing great this morning. It's, uh, it's Friday, the end of the week, and you know what's ahead of us. It's a weekend of busyness, <laughs> getting things done, and um, maybe some of you aren't uh, even celebrating the holidays or celebrating Christmas at all, so excuse my exuberance, but for me, I just I just really like this time of the year. Um, I think people are tuned uh, for a different mentality. They're, they're just looking for special moments and to be kind to one another, and one of my big things, of course, is kindness changes everything. Just by being nice and being thoughtful, um, the whole world can change, and having knows that we need it this this time of the year it's been a very very um, well it's been a very interesting 2016 and I'm sure you're all looking forward to the new year with anticipation some concern and um, you know just hoping that things work out but you know I think we go into this into this season with a mindset and I'm, I'm gonna try to today talk to you about um, a way of looking at it through a happiness lens now of course we go on about happiness a lot and it's the most difficult word in the in the universe to describe because you know one person's happiness is is not the same as another uh, person's but for me one thing that's happy is my tea <laughs> I'm drinking my chamomile tea this is um chamomile and orange blossoms which I think is really lovely and um, it's, it's actually quite a nice tea it's uh, it's quite uh, different I'm I'm not a big orange person I must be the only person in the world who doesn't like orange juice but um, it's it's nice and it's it's nice to change to do something different so anyway get a cup of tea or coffee and let's go through um, today um, just a remember a reminder I think of, um, of just how to approach the holiday with a bit of a happy lens now we have a, um, a, a blogger he's one of our gentlemen his name is Douglas Cooper and I know Douglas watches the show every day so hi Douglas it's really gr great to have you here he's, he's a fabulous man and um, he writes for us on topics um, that are just the most fascinating ones um, imaginable and uh, it's, it's just nice to have his perspective on things sometimes so I wanted to um, feature one of his uh, articles he wrote about a book that was written by a friend of his called Harry Hoover it's a book called get glad and it's really a practical guide focus on practical a practical guide to happy living and in this book um, by his friend Harry he talks about aiming for happier instead of happy that if you try to get to the the, the sort of the all-encompassing happy happiness you won't succeed but just try to be happier and you can do this in a number of different ways now of course the attitude of gratitude is you know 60 and me's mantra I mean we remind people all the time to just uh, write down a list of the things that make you happy and uh, that you're grateful for and this is the time of year to do it more than any because there's more to be thankful for people in my opinion are, are magnifying their goodness and I like to encourage encourage that so um, he, Douglas mentions seven reasons in the, in the book that people are not happy. So here's the things that you can avoid. So if you have a choice, not to do, the, do the things you love and don't do the things you don't love. Here's some of the things that make people unhappy, not just at this time of the year, but all year. They worry about money. So, you know, how much is enough? It's just a question that only one person can decide, but one person has a lot of money and can be unhappy. Somebody with a, a, on a limited budget can be extremely satisfied with their life. But just get, you know, people. the research is that people with a lot of money are only slightly happier. They just have other complexities. So don't worry if you can about money right now. Just uh, you know, spend within your means. Lack of focus. People who are not happy tend to let their minds wander or let their minds stick on one thing. Not focus, but just get obsessed with one thought, one shortcoming, one weakness, one person. And uh, in doing that, you really lack the focus, the overall focus of the, of the experience, the whole thing. Another thing is the inability to accept responsibility. I've had to deal with this a lot in my life. I don't know about you, but it's just that you make choices, you make decisions, perfectly good decisions that you think at the time are the right ones, and then they turn out not to be. And so um, you spend some time thinking, if only I could have, I should have. Let it go, take responsibility, own it, own your life, own the challenges that have come about because of your decisions. That's a happy, a happy uh, thing to do. Another thing is to, to, believe, to believe that material things cannot necessarily make you happy. It's just that focus shifting to, from stuff to experience to, to joy for life. 
and not to think that you have to buy big gifts uh, or that you have to give a lot of money. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that for the happiness factor, for the, the gladness factor. Another thing is to compare yourself to others. This is a hard one, I know, because a culture almost encourages it, but um, it's really uh, uh, the, the road to, to sadness if you keep on comparing yourself to other people. Most women in their 60s, I think, get this. I don't think we compare ourselves as much as we used to, but I do know that there are some that are still drawn by that. And sometimes it goes back to their, your, your childhood, you know, that what your parents taught you, but not to compare yourself, that's the next thing. And then seeking perfection, that kind of goes along with it. Uh, there's no such thing. It doesn't, it doesn't exist in the human being. <laughs> there's always a flaw. And as we've talked about before, that little crack lets the lights come in, lets the light of goodness, the light of, of, of positivity. So I think that's important to remember. And then the final thing that he mentions in this book called Get Glad is not liking yourself. You know, not liking the fact that you have this weakness or that you have this um, thing that's holding you back. And I think that those are things that really um, can be destructive because everyone has something that is, is special that makes you unique. So anyway, that's, that's a little bit of a... And you know, of course, then the book goes on to talk about things you can do like getting sleep and exercising and uh, implementing a good lifestyle. But all these things are ones that you know. And I, all I'm doing today is just reminding you to just, you know, have a, read, the story, read the article. It goes through all of this in a lot of detail. And just try to cheer yourself and bo boost your, your mindset so that you can approach tomorrow, which is Christmas Eve, and then Christmas Day on the 25th, and um, whether you practice the faith or not, to, to just make it a special time for you. Have fun with your family. Let the, let the issues go. Let the, you know, just kind of get, move on with everything and just try to enjoy. And just help someone out, else out who may be having a tough time. You know, we're going to be here on Christmas Day, of course. And, um, you know, if you, you know, we're going to be talking about things that we might be doing by, by ourselves or with family. And um, just want you to know you're not alone. This is really important. This is, this is a time to have fun. Now, I wanted to close today with a little story. And, um, and I wanted to make it, um, I almost want to read it to you because it's kind of, it's one that I picked up and I hope it inspires you or at least gives you a lens on, on this holiday season. It's, it's actually about a project called the White Elephant, White Ele Ele Envelope, <laughs> Envelope Project, Envelope, Envelope, White Envelope Project. And it was actually written based on a story by a woman who submitted this article to um, a competition. And she won the competition, I think it was for um, a women's magazine. It was some time ago. But the story she called for the man who hated Christmas. And it's a really cool story. Basically she says that she, um, she started this um, tradition because her husband hated Christmas. He didn't like um, gifts or anything. And uh, they'd always try to, to find the things that he liked, but you know, he could never be pleased. So one day she went to, um, uh, you know, she, she wouldn't buy the normal stuff. She'd always try to buy something unique. But one day when her son was 12, well, their son was 12, they went to um, a football game. And the team that her son was playing for was really well equipped. It had lots of money, so they had you know the the uniforms and they had the little helmets and they really um, you know they looked great. And they were of course because they were you know encouraged by their parents. They all got out there and they did their best. And the team that they played against was a team from another um, neighborhood in the city. And this was a team that didn't have a lot of financial support. And they were not wearing uh, a proper uniform. They didn't have helmets. They were just playing because they loved football. And um, her son's team, of course, won every game. And um, they just, you know, they beat them soundly every single game. And, and it was, you know, her husband said just how sad that was, you know, that these guys, young men, didn't even have a chance to win one game, that they just weren't, it wasn't equal, it wasn't, it wasn't matched. And so she thought, you know, that's an idea. I'm going to go and I'm going to do something for my husband this Christmas that he'll appreciate. So she went out and she donated some money to the, uh, to the football team so that they could have a proper uniform. And, um, and then in a little white envelope she put on the tree, um, you know, uh, for her husband, a little envelope that was for him. And it said, you know, that um, I, for, for you for Christmas, my gift was to give money to this uh, football team and to give these kids helmets and proper uniforms to wear. And she says the smile was, his smile was the brightest thing about Christmas that year. 
And so then she started a habit of doing this. And every Christmas, she would uh, put a little white envelope um, on the tree. And every year it was something that she would do that she knew he would care about. So um, mentally handicapped kids at a hockey game. Um, she then gave money to some, a couple of brothers in the town who had, um, whose house had burnt down uh, the week before Christmas. And every year she would choose a charity or some goodness in her town that her husband would appreciate. And it became the highlight of her Christmas. Every year, the, everybody would gather around the tree, all the kids, you know, that would forget their presents. They just wanted to know what was in the envelope and what was in the white envelope. And so they, um, they would um, gather around while their dad opened the present. And, and, and every year he was thrilled. Well, of course, um, the children grew and the, you know life went on and uh, the, 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 the whole tree Christmas thing lost its allure but um, but one Christmas that they, uh, they lost their, their dad her husband died he had cancer and it's just, it was just so sad because she said um, when Christmas rolled around I was so wrapped in grief that I barely got the tree up but Christmas Eve found me placing an envelope on the tree and in the morning it was joined by three more I don't know why this is so emotional for me I think it's just because it's such a wonderful story about this woman and you know how she prioritized Christmas differently. Anyway, so Christmas Eve found, says, found me placing an envelope on the tree, and in the morning it was joined by three more. Each of our children, unbeknownst to her, had put um, a, an envelope on the tree to remember their dad, and everyone, you know, had given something that they thought he would find of value and something that they thought would make his Christmas happy. Isn't that sweet? And anyway, this became, and she said, Mike's spirit, her husband's name was Mike, his spirit, like the Christmas spirit, will always be with us. And this became such a popular article that um, a group started, um, it was published in 1982 in Women's Day magazine, and it was a first place winner. And the story um, inspired a family, it's uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, to start this uh, project called the White Envelope Project. And they basically are a nonprofit uh, group that is dedicated to giving people things at Christmas that um, that make them feel special and you know just bring some joy to their lives. So I just thought that was really sweet, and um, it, and they're, they're also their mission is to educate youth about the importance of giving. And I hope that's inspired you. It really did um, inspire me. And even as I read it, I didn't realize how emotional that um, kind of focus on Christmas on the holidays can be. Just give something that has some meaning and some purpose. So here we are. We're, it's uh, almost getting on for Christmas now. We're Friday night and uh, Friday night tonight. Then we've got New Year, Christmas Eve tomorrow on Saturday. And then Sunday is Christmas Day. Um, I, I hope I'm not going on too much about it. It's, uh, it's just the time of year when I, I, you know, I hope I can bring this uh, joy to you as well. And thank you for being here, for all that you do to support us. And um, you know, tell a friend who may be alone at Christmas to join us. I think that'd be great. That's something you could give. So my question for today is, what holiday traditions do you celebrate? Like the White Envelope Project. Do you have a holiday tradition in your family that you celebrate? Share it in the comment section below and we'll have a conversation. And then we'll, I'll tell you what uh, some of you have shared tomorrow uh, when we come back together for 60 and Me. But I look forward to seeing you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.